Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from King's Landing Sport Fishing with today's YouTube video on targeting coho and steelhead out in the blue zone, out deep on Lake Ontario. You know, there's times when uh, the fishing is not too great inshore and running a charter boat, that means I've got to go offshore and I've got to find fish for my customers. And often when I'm going offshore, I'm going to be targeting coho and rainbow trout uh, for my customers uh, and we can have super productive days out there. You know, why spend, you know, a five or six hour trip fishing, you know, near shore by the harbor trying to grind out one or two bites when you can go offshore and, you know, have 15, 20 bite uh, mornings or afternoons. So what I'm going to do today is uh, talk about some of the tactics I use when I'm specifically targeting coho and steelhead. It's not that they won't bite just anything. Like they'll bite a lot of the, a lot of the same tactics you will fish for Chinook will still take rainbow trout and coho. But there's particular, there's particular uh, tactics or lures or colors that you can use when you're fishing only for coho and steelhead that just makes your day far more productive. And that's what I'm going to cover today. So um, first thing, when I'm going out deep fishing for coho and rainbow trout or steelhead, uh, I find typically you want to cover that top 50 feet of water. I'm going to be running downriggers. I'm going to be running divers. I'm going to be running long lines. And my long lines are a mixture of lead core, weighted steel, and I'll also use drop weights. So that's, uh, you know, a lot of the similar setups that we'd use fishing inshore. I'm using the same stuff, but I'm going offshore. You know, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, weighted steel, you know, I've got one setup here. This one here, sorry, this is actually a lead core. When it comes to lead core, sorry, um, I find I'm using four, five, six, seven colors. Those are probably the four most productive lead core setups I'm going to use when I'm fishing out deep. For weighted steel, right here, I've got a weighted steel. This one's a, a 125. This 125 gets me down around 22, 23 feet. I'll use a, a you know 125, a 150, a 200, and a 250. That's what I'll use when I'm running weighted steel. And then when I'm running drop weights or snap weights, I'll use a setup where I've got 50 pound braid with 50 feet of monofilament or fluorocarbon leader. And I'll use that and I'll use it with drop weights. These are the pow casting drop weights. This one's a partic this particular one's a five ounce. Um, so I'll use often when I'm fishing out deep, I'll use a four, a five, and a six ounce. And I use the 50-50 method when I'm using these. So basically, you let out 50 feet of line. So that's the 50 feet of fluorocarbon or monofilament on that rod. Then you clip that weight in, and then you let another 50 feet. And the way these work is for every ounce, it drops down seven feet. So when I'm running a four ounce, I'm getting about 28 feet. When I'm running a five ounce, I'm getting about 35 feet. And when I'm running a six ounce, I'm getting about 42 feet. So that's why I'm running those particular weights because I want to cover that, you know, call it top, you know, 20 to 50 feet. So snap weights are definitely part of my presentation for sure. Uh, I am, like I mentioned, I'm also using downriggers. Uh, and when I'm using downriggers, I'm going to be using typically a, a lighter rod in those downriggers with 20 pound test uh, uh, monofilament uh, line. And then I'll also often use a, uh, a fixed cheater on those rods. That's where you have uh, a clipped line, uh, usually 10, 15 feet above the, the main spoon. Uh, I'll often run either the same exact spoon or the same pattern, but one size slightly smaller above that. So that's what I'm using for rods. Now what am I using for, you know, for the lures? You know, when I'm fishing out deep, I'm going to be honest with you, it is a spoon and fly program for me. I don't bother putting meat out when I'm fishing out deep, targeting coho and steelhead. If I do put some meat out, it might be that I've got a uh, one rigger fishing a bit deeper for out of temperature kings and I'll have, uh, I'll have a big meat presentation, but that's not targeting coho and steelhead, and that's not what this video is about today. When it comes to spoons, though, uh, I use a combination of magnum and standard size spoons, and I'm going to share my four, uh, you know, call it most popular colors when I'm fishing out deep. 
First of all, Steelhead and Salmon, sorry, sorry, Steelhead and Coho, they like pink. So this particular spoon right here, this is a hot fish, UV, I think it's a UV pink hot dot. This is a great spoon. Uh, it can take lots of uh, rainbows, Steelhead and Coho with this particular spoon. Secondly, this is my go-to, one of my go-to spoons. It's, it's, it's not typical. You know, everyone thinks of me as a guy that runs green spoons when I'm fishing for salmon. But actually, this spoon is one I use a lot fishing for Chinook, Coho, or Steelhead. And that is the Hot Fish UV Glow Wonder Bread. It, it's a cool spoon. And it catches them all. And it works so incredibly great. Um, this particular one's a Magnum, but I run it in both sizes. Next, it's another UV Glow. I really like the UV Glow spoons. You see, I'm not sure if you can see that here. Half it's crushed glow, half it's UV. This particular one's orange dots. Orange is a go-to color for uh, for coho and steelhead. And this one works exceptionally well. And lastly, this spoon is another one of my go-to spoons that I'll use all year round, uh, you know, for Chinook, for coho, and for steelhead. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's another hot fish spoon. This particular one is absolutely mangled. You know, it's been bent to hell. It's caught so many fish. Um, but it's... Uh, it's green chartreuse, and it's uh, it's got a glow ladder in the middle. It works incredibly well, but you can see it is just mangled, and I I don't want to don't want to get rid of it. It still catches fish. It's like it's one of my lucky spoons, and it stays out. So those are four spoons that I would use in uh, whether it be mag or standard size when fishing for coho and steelhead. Those four do tremendously well. The other thing I've added to my program, what works really well. Uh, a little bit different. They're, they're actually a little bit hard to find, I'd say, nowadays. But when I'm fishing out deep, I use these. And that is the Apex Lure. So this is a Apex, I think they're called Apex uh, Trout Killers. Um, I got a bunch of these when I lived in uh, Vancouver. And uh, I didn't buy these orange. This one's actually got a silver back, and it's orange on the front. Um, what I did was, this one I think was actually blue before. And uh, I just took a little bit of sandpaper, paper, scuffed it up, got some red spray paint from Canadian Tire, Gave it a quick spray, put some clear coat on, and this is a great rig for uh, this Apex Trout Killer in orange for coho and, uh, and rainbows. In addition, here's another one. This one is, a, I think it's a factory color uh, from uh, from Apex. It's red and white. Uh, this is actually one I used to use. Uh, I used to use this one actually trolling in Vancouver Harbor uh, on the north shore of Vancouver Harbor actually for coho um, when they weren't biting typical salmon tackle. I'd throw this out and you'd be surprised what it could do. And uh, same thing, on Lake Ontario, white and red, trout apex uh, lure works well too. So that's really called the, you know, the, the spoon type presentations. As I mentioned, lots of flies. So uh, when it comes to fly presentations, I'm going to start by saying uh, green and chartreuses, uh, you know, the same flies I would use for, for a Chinook, they work uh, just fine for uh, rainbows and for cohos. The only thing is I change things up. So, my paddles. I start to, you'll start to see a lot of orange getting introduced. So here's a fly, you know, it's, it's your green and glow fly, but I'm running it with a uh, chrome paddle with orange. When I'm fishing for coho and rainbow, I want some bling and I want lots of orange. So that's why this particular paddle works great. It's, just, it's a chrome with crush, orange dots, green and glow fly. That's money out there in the deep. You'll also see behind me, actually, I've got some orange paddles in one of my boxes there. That's for when I'm fishing out deep. I got orange dodgers and another paddle here for fishing out deep. So, 8 inch works well, but I like one with orange dots. Similarly, Spin Doctor. You can't buy an 8 inch Spin Doctor in orange. So, this one here, it's just a chrome Spin Doctor that I uh, took some orange spray paint, sprayed at the front. Gave it a clear coat. Another one that works very well out deep. Those are your standard size 8 inch. Then, you know, I think these were new a few years ago from Dreamweaver. The Baby Spin Doctors. These Baby Spin Doctors, they work they work really well. Um, I've tried them for Chinooks and uh, I've really not had a lot of success. But I find they really shine when fishing for... Uh, when fishing for coho and, and steelhead. This one here was actually just a plain white one. I, uh, I blasted on some orange dots and, uh, you know, rigged it up with a tube fly. 
I am going to I'll unravel this one. This one is uh, just a plain orange. You can buy this from Dreamweaver. They've got plain orange. They've got some with orange crush. Uh, they've got some with orange UV. Um, orange is a go-to for this baby spin doctor when you're when you're fishing out deep. And what I do here is I'm actually using a hot fish tube fly. So you'll see here it slides back and forth. And what this actually is, I called it a hot fish tube fly. It's actually the same as a hot hot fish Twinkie fly. That's what it is. It's a Twinkie fly. Uh, works well. Some people use flies that are actually wrapped around the hook. I don't like that. I find the tube fly works well. And it lasts much longer because when the fish snaps at the treble, gets the treble hooked, the fly will often slide up and doesn't get mangled by the fish's teeth. Whereas if you're running one where it's wrapped around the hook, um, they get mangled. So running a, running a baby spin doctor with a, t with a small little tube fly. Um, when it comes to leader length, I run two and a half times the attractor. So if I've got a six inch spin doctor here, I'm gonna be running a 15 inch lead. That's what I'm gonna be running on this. You'll also notice I don't run the factory uh, swivel on the back here. I just take a regular clamp or clasp and that's it. I want as much action as possible. I'm still running a 50 pound fluorocarbon here and I want as much action so there's a mu this, this fly is moving around and doing its thing. And that one will be, that'll be extremely deadly. Typically, I'll run the, the baby spin doctors um, or the flies uh, on the 8-inch. The Those will go on uh, my weighted steels or my lead cores. So if I'm running the 8-inch, typically that's going to be on one of my heavier setups. It'll be on like the 7-color uh, the or the 10-color lead. Or it'll be on like a, two, a 200 or 250 weighted steel. And then the babies, I'll put those on the 4, 5, 6 color or the 125, 150 uh, weighted steels. And then the last thing I will use, and this is a, it's a bit of a dead tactic. Uh, you know, I haven't seen people using Dodgers on, on the Great Lakes or at least on Lake Ontario where I fish. Uh, I, I don't see it very often. But when you're fishing for coho and steelhead, they work incredibly well. And I just, these are, this is actually, I think this is a, let's see, it is a six inch Gibbs Delta um, Dodger. And what I've done here is, I've actually just cut some tape. This is a red tape. And I've got another one here with some orange tape. And I've just put a sticker on it. This originally came just silver with some holographic tape. And if I didn't have the tape kicking around, I'd have probably just taken it, similar to you know one of these. I'd have sprayed it orange or red and gave it a clear coat. But I had the, uh, I had the tape. And that way, I've still got some bling. Because I've got the silver, but I've got the, uh, I've got the orange or the red. And similarly, I've got a tube fly, another hot fish tube fly. This one's got green and UV and some glow in it. And similar concept, I'm running a, I'm running a, a two and a half times. So I think this is a six inch Dodger. I got about 15 inches of gain on the back of this, uh, this Dodger. The difference between the Dodger and the, uh, and the spin doctors, the Dodger kind of sways back and forth and, and you get that kind of action on the, uh, on the fly. Every once in a while, it may do a complete 360. Whereas your uh, your spin doctor is constantly doing spirals, that's the that's the dif difference. They've got different action, and some days the dodgers will be magic, and other days the spin doctors will be magic. So what I'll typically do when I'm fishing for coho and for uh, and for steelhead out deep, I'll have one of each out. I'll start with one of each on uh, on my outside uh, on my outside board rods, and uh, and it works incredibly well. But that's really it. So, you know, just uh, when you're fishing out deep for coho and uh, coho and steelhead, just to kind of, you know, kind of recoup what we discussed here, I'd say a couple things to review. First of all, it's flies and spoons. You, you can catch them on meat if you really want, but it's not worth the hassle. Flies and spoons, I like to troll for them typically around 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, um, that's the speed I use running flies and spoons. On my riggers, I'll often run uh, your spoon programs. Spoon program on the riggers with uh, with uh, one of them will have a fixed uh, a fixed cheater, and the other one will typically have a slider. That's how I do it on my boat. On my divers, I'll get into uh, on the divers. I'll often run the bigger presentations for flies on the divers, 
And then when I get to the outside rods, that's when I start to bring in uh, on the on the long lines. I'll bring in those apex uh, trout killers. I'll bring in spoons, but I absolutely use the mini spin doctors or the dodgers on those long lines. And, and you know what? It, it works really, really, really well. Typically, like I said, it's in the top 50 feet of uh, the water column. And uh, you can get a lot of numbers out there fishing for coho and steelhead. The only warning I have is uh, please, 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 if you're going to go out deep, like I said, for, I'm, I'm out of Toronto, uh, out of Bluffers Park Marina. When I go out to the, to the blue zone, it's about 8 to 10 miles. Like, I'm offshore quite a distance. So I'd say uh, make sure you've got the weather for it and make sure you've got the boat for it. You know, don't be going out there in a 14, 15, 16 footer. Um, and don't be going out there alone if, uh, if, if, there's a, if, the, if it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of chop. Like, typically, when I'm going deep out there, there's myself and probably, you know, three, four, five other charter captains all running trips. We all know the same thing, that the inshore bites uh, fallen off or not very good, and we need to go out deep. And we'll go out together, and we'll stay in contact either through our cell phones or we'll stay in contact through our radios to make sure people are, everyone's safe. Because often when we're out there, you know, the water is cooler, and, uh, you know, you're, you're a long ways out. You know, you can even get to the point when you start getting out to the 450 plus range that you start to lose cell phone signal. So it's uh, really important to be safe. Make sure that people know if you're going out deep. And uh, preferred, I like to go out there with other boats. You know, make sure I'm going out there with other boats. You know, we're not fishing on top of each other. We may have, you know, half a mile, a third of a mile distance between each other, but at least make sure you're out there with other boats and, uh, you know, you're out there looking out for each other and staying in touch. But some great tips for catching coho and steelhead. Fantastic table fare. Yeah, they don't have the fight as you get with a nice big, you know, 20 plus pound king salmon. But that's where I like to run some of the lighter, lighter downrigger rods and some of the lighter uh, gear out there because it's still a ton of fun. You know, if you ask me, uh, you know, a 12 to 14 pound uh, rainbow is possible on Lake Ontario. And you get one of those coming out of the water um, trying, to get, trying to get itself free. That's one heck of a fight for yourself or in my case for my, uh, my charter guests. Anyways... That's today's video on fishing for coho and uh, steelhead offshore. Um, and uh, good luck in 2021. Hope you get lots of fish and be safe. Have a good one.